I know it's probably a little bit early to, to ask at the moment, given the fact some of the players will still be coming back, but how, how, are all, how are all your international players, the ones that you've seen so far? Because you've obviously had quite a few away. Yeah, like all the other teams, we have uh, a few players uh, been travelling a lot. So far, um, yeah, a few will come back a little bit earlier. Musa, Tino Livramento was coming earlier. Uh, yeah, the rest, uh, I think uh, today in the afternoon when we have this first session, I think we, we will have everybody back, so, uh, except Longy. Longy is uh, in self-isolation in the hotel because of a uh, positive COVID test. Uh, but the rest will arrive today and then we will have a look. Um, sorry, just, just on that, was, was the, is that a positive COVID test for, for Loggy himself, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Um, and I'm only asking this because I'm Scottish myself, but did you have a special word for, for Shea Adams when he, when he came back, given his involvement against Austria the other night? <laughs> Congrats, eh? That you take a big win uh, against... Uh, the Austrian, yeah, I will have to have a serious conversation with him, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the penalty. No, I think very good game. I'm very happy for him. Uh, he, he showed his qualities and, uh, yeah, um, it was a big win for Scotland, definitely. Uh, on, a more, on a more serious note, Ralph, can, can I get your, your opinion on the situation just now, the, the sort of club versus country row that's going on? As a, as a, I know none of your players were, were away in a red list country or whatever, but as a manager, if, if you were to face a player from a red list country um, that that flown to a red list country, should I say, this weekend, how would you feel as a manager or one of your players in that situation? I think in the moment it's, it's, it's definitely a problem to send the players all over the world uh, to play some games somewhere. I also don't understand why in the moment you have to play three games uh, you have really a big problem with preparing for the weekend because they're coming back uh, on, uh, you see, on Thursday earliest. Uh, so you have maybe one and a half day uh, to, to prepare for the weekend. Uh, we were agreeing for two games and the last must be on Tuesday so that you have a little bit more time for, for our job, what we will have, will have to do. And in the moment you have also the issue with the, with the COVID situation still. Uh, traveling is still not... Uh, the easiest one and as soon as you have to have the quarantine uh, issue yeah you must definitely block uh, players from from going somewhere and uh, because otherwise uh, you lose them for a long time like all the Brazilian and Argentinian players are now out uh, you can imagine for a club what it means uh, and uh, yeah this is a situation that is definitely not helpful for the players the player want to to play for the international it is this for sure uh, he also want to play for us as a club. Um, there must, yeah, you have to be possible to to find a solution where the player doesn't get under pressure, because in the end it's about the player and 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 he has to quarantine and and this is what we what we have to solve this this issue. Thank you. Thanks, Ralph. Thank you. Then we've got a Paul Walker at PLP. Morning, Ralph. Um, before the break, you said you were, you went into it feeling positive. What is it that has pleased you from the first three Premier League games? Yeah, the way we played uh, or we created chances and scored goals was a good one, I think. Um, our game with the ball was very good. Our game against the ball also, but uh, the amount of goals we conceded in the first three games was uh, above the average we tried to have so far. And uh, this is what you have to change. And this is a big topic for the last weeks. It's getting more and more difficult in the Premier League to have clean sheets. You see it every weekend. Teams are getting stronger and, and it's not so easy. Uh, a few chances are enough for the opponent to score. And uh, this is what makes it so difficult. But especially in the last game, uh, we, we normally should have won it. And uh, we had the bigger chances and uh, conceded in the end a goal. What is absolutely... Uh, to defend and uh, yeah, this is uh, what we have to, to to discuss. On the back of that, you have strengthened in defence, haven't you? Are you happy with the business you've been able to do in those departments and adding to that the competition that it's now created? Yes, uh, on the, nearly every position we have definitely a good uh, competition uh, to, yeah, 
to, to, to speak about uh, strengthening every position. This was the plan for the summer. Uh, and I think the signings definitely did this. Um, we have a few luxury problems if you want, but uh, we will need this bigger side for the whole season. We have made experience last season that we were a little bit short of, of alternatives in some moments. So um, that's the reason why we try to, yeah, to extend the group a little bit. And uh, yes, uh, I was uh, happy with the work we did in the summer uh, and uh, nearly everything what we wanted to do finally happened. It helped us massively that we get a lot of money for Inzi and, and, and Yannick because uh, this was a, the fundament for us to, to be active on the transfer market because we have uh, no owner who, who uh, gives us a lot of money for buying players. We have to sell players if you want to buy new ones. And I think uh, this job we did good in the summer. And West Ham next, they've had an excellent start. But overall, what do you make of the progress that they've made under David Moyes? Yeah, I spoke last season about that. We lost against them in the final game. We, we know the, the strength they have. Uh, they have uh, very good individual qualities in the team, uh, but also uh, clear and very, very um, yeah, efficient uh, way of playing football. And uh, this is the reason why they are so successful. Good luck. Thank you, Ralph. Thank you. Cheers. Go to Adam at Radio Solent. Ralph, good morning to you. Yeah, hello, good morning. Nice to see you. Um, just on the West Ham thing, why do you, what is it about them and the way they play that make them one of your most annoying opponents because they're not a team you've enjoyed much success against? Is there something particular about the way they play? Yeah, um, if you want, they don't give you a lot of chances of winning balls because they don't really take risk of building up. Uh, and on the other side, they are... The biggest threat is their quick counter attacks, uh, their quick ball in the in in the to the strikers, and that they have a, a very dynamic, uh, strong one. We know all. Uh, this is Antonio, and and he can decide games by his own. And but also the rest, uh, they have a good midfield. Uh, they have uh, immediate enough players in the box to score. It's very tough to defend them around the box, so you normally should keep them away from your box. But this is difficult because they immediately kick the ball uh, very well up in front and try to, to come quick in your half. Uh, everything what a, what a good team wants to do, they have. And uh, finally, uh, the quality, especially in the final third, for scoring in the right moments. Yeah? They don't need a lot of chances to score. And uh, this is uh, part of a, of a top team. Um, it's the first of for these four games now before the next window, the next break. Two of them are away at Manchester City and Chelsea, so very hard. Uh, and the two of them are at home to West Ham and Wolves. So obviously, like you, I think there were so many encouraging things about the first three games, but you must want to get that first win. And I look at the two home matches and think, right, the, these need to be good points builders for you because the away games are so tough in this little spell. Yeah, this is the difference from you to me. Uh, I don't look uh, to the whole one. package. <laughs> <laughs> I, when you look on our schedule, you think every weekend, oh, poor, yeah, poor stuff, oh, okay. But um, you can also see it like, yeah, it's always a good chance uh, to, to take points there. And uh, I have seen very good games against Chelsea. I think I've never lost there so far uh, since I'm a manager here. So that's not the reason that we go there and say we have to win there. But there's always a chance to get something. And this is the interesting thing in the Premier League. So let's keep on going from game to game. We know that this is a tough schedule. We know that every week is tough. And uh, I don't see easy games uh, over the whole season. And you always have to show a very good performances if you want to take something. And uh, the good thing is that we have shown good performances and we know that we can do this. And that's the reason why we are always positive when we go in such a game. How is Lianco settling in? He's a bit of a character, I can see, from his social media. He's a big, confident, brash, happy, smiley man. How is he set it, settling in? Because he's got a bit of adaptation to do to get, to get uh, into the team, yeah? Yeah, I mean, um, as always, for us, signings, new signings are long-term projects. And uh, this is what I told him. Uh, his English is not the best so far. He has to learn it, but he's willing to learn and all the rest he has to learn in this club. He will. A very good character. 
and uh, yeah, very settled uh, personality and uh, very happy to have him here. Um, Ori is in the moment our little translator. My, my Italian is, is not that good that I try to speak with him, especially in the football business. There's uh, some, some words I don't know, but I think, uh, yeah, he, he will learn English also very quick. And then, uh, yeah, he will make uh, definitely a lot of games for us and be a good, good signing for the future, I think. Excellent. Thank you, Ralph. Good luck Saturday. Thank you. Uh, I want to ask about James Ward-Prowse and his, um, I don't know, how, if, is he feeling a bit frustrated at the moment? Because you think about his summer, he didn't make the, the Euros in the end, and he wasn't in the last England camp, having been in many squads before. So is he feeling like he's got, you know, a lot, maybe not something to prove, but feeling, you know, he really wants to show his talent over the next course of the month to try and get back into that England, England squad? I mean, um, it was sure not nice for him to watch the, the Euros with, with a team where he normally should be in. And uh, finally, uh, this is not, he's not super happy about that. But I think uh, uh, he's a very professional guy and he always knows that everything about performances. And I think when he plays in other years, like, like he played the last two, I think there's only a question of time since he is uh, part of, of, of the international team again. And I, I see him there, to be honest. Uh, he has all the qualities he needs for being in this team. But uh, you speak about a very strong England side and uh, the midfield players they have are also not that bad. So <laughs> it's not so easy to step in there. But uh, like always, uh, the only chance you have is to show up every week. Uh, captain of a Premier League team in this age is not normal. And uh, the performances he showed the last two years, uh, especially his continuously uh, playing every time uh, is also something that not at all a lot of players can can show in this age. And yes, I think he 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 can handle it very well. I think uh, he's very professional and and uh, he's more concentrating on what he wants to show every weekend. And that he is a very important player. He showed last weekend against Newcastle. Also, he takes responsibility, and this is what we need from a captain. Mm. Um, and. <clears throat> You mentioned about Antonio, who's obviously had a fantastic start to the season and, in, in fact, been excellent under David Moyes. Um, I sort of wanted to ask about the, the, the manager's role in his, his uh, sort of turnaround. He did it before with a player, I imagine you all know Marko Arnautovic from his time with Austria, turned him into a striker and, and he was really effective and he's, he's, he's doing it even more so with Antonio. You obviously played a big role in, in Danny Ings. You obviously didn't change position, but his turnaround in form. What have you made from a sort of manager's perspective of David Moyes' role in Antonio's um, rebirth as a fantastic striker? I think the only thing that you can do as a manager is to, to bring the player in positions where he has his biggest strength. When I have a player who needs space to attack, who needs more space to go, uh, then it wouldn't be really helpful to be dominant uh, and and play slow in the in the in the final third and there ten times around the box. So I think the, the best thing you can do is to adapt the game what you have to to the quality of the strikers you have. And when you do this, then automatically the striker will perform better and will score more goals. And this is what he did with Antonio. And I think this was what we did with with Danny Ings. We tried to bring him in the best possible position to, to, to bring his strength uh, on the pitch and help you. Thanks, Rob. Okay, we'll go to Dan Sheldon. Thank you, Jordan. Good, good morning, Ralph. Um, if I could just ask you about Kyle Walker-Peters playing at left-back. I mean, what, what do you like about him at left-back? Is it a case of Tino's been so good at right-back, you need to try and shoehorn Kyle in into the team? Or is it he's really impressed you in training playing in that role? No, um, I tell you that this season it's very often about what I need on the weekend. So when there's a 50-50 situation, then it's very often, or it will happen sometimes that even if you have played a good game last week, that you don't play in the weekend. Eh? Uh, I don't want to compare us to, to bigger sides or, 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 or top six teams in the league, but they have so many games over the whole season that they automatically do this because they have to. and. That's the reason why we have a bigger side now. We can choose what we need on the weekend and uh, then finally you have to accept it as a player and wait for your next chance to play and then show again that you are a good player and want to play. I think this is normal and um, this is what the advantage we have this season and this is what we will take. And how has Romain taken 
being left out of the team um, in, in place of Kyle? Has he responded well? Yeah, very professional. This is what I have, what I expect. Nobody should be happy when he's not playing, but he should take it very professional. And uh, that helps you massively for coming back in the team when you immediately show during the week that you want to play, that you want to be in the team again. He did also a good job against Man United. And uh, then he didn't play against uh, in, the, in the cup and then against Newport because we need a little bit more, more uh, quality on the ball or, or a little bit different different behaviors from a left back and uh, this is why I decided for, for Kyle and that doesn't mean that he now is, is, is always playing and, and he's and, and Romo sits on the bench. Thank you Ralph, best of luck for Saturday. Thank you. Okay, Tom Leach. Cheers Jordan. Morning Ralph, you okay? Yeah, thank you. you? Yeah, good, thank you. Um, just be, I want to ask about Armando Brogia, but just before I do, can we have an update on Stuart Armstrong and Will Smallbow and how are they getting on with their injuries? Yeah. Wood is now yeah, on the on the edge of, 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 of coming back in the training, in the, in, the, in the group training, still alone. But today I think he will the first time to join us. So uh, we didn't uh, force the duels or the uncontrolled movement so much. So we tried to, 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 to give him the time. And uh, yes, but it looks now that he is short before returning and Dewey still takes a little bit of time with his calf muscle. So uh, we'll take a little bit more. Um, and then we have Theo also with a little bit issues in the moment. Uh, but these are not so big issues. Okay, brilliant. Um, just on Armando Brozier, had a brilliant international break for his nation. Um, scored two goals in two games. How far away do you think he is from making a real impact on the Premier League? Um, not so far. I think he had also a good impact in the last game when he was coming on against Newcastle and uh, um, I'm very happy that he he showed uh, his qualities after coming in here. Uh, I think he took a little bit longer than Tino to show uh, how good he can be and uh, there's still a guy who, who needs to be pushed hard all the time, I think. Then he then he develops himself and then he has some qualities that can help you definitely. He has a good finish, he's quick, but he must work hard for, for getting a chance to play and uh, I'm sure that he will get the chance when, he was, when he's working hard. Just on him really quickly, are you under any pressure from Chelsea to, to play him a certain amount of times? Obviously it's a loan, so he's not, he's not come on loan to not play, if that makes sense. Are you under any pressure to play him or do you get pretty much free run on what you do with him? Uh, and e even if uh, we would have, uh, then it's, it's still uh, the most important thing that he deserves to play. Uh, this is not about having pressure or whatever. When he deserves uh, to play because he's better than the other one and then he plays and that's it. And uh, it's not about uh, uh, how much we have to pay if he's not playing or whatever. So this, is, this is the most important thing for me when I take a long player is that he he gets a chance to play when he, I, mean, I think that he gives me something that uh, the others don't give me and then he, then he, he deserves to play and this is what we will, we will see this season. Okay, Ralph. Best of luck at the weekend. Thank you. Okay, Alfie House. Morning, Ralph. I um, just wanted to ask about uh, Thierry Small. There's some pictures of you talking to him in training in the last couple of days on the, the club website. I wanted to get your thoughts on sort of how he's gone on his attitude and ability. Yeah, that was the first two sessions he had this week with the team. Um, was after a long time where he didn't train. I think after uh, end of May or something was his last session, and so he needs definitely time to to come on the level where the other players are. But uh, what I like is that the guy is very positive. He was very happy to be part from our session. And yeah, we will give him the time to, to work on his deficits and then finally, uh, yeah, an important alternative on the fullback, fullback position, definitely. Yeah, it might be difficult for you to say um, the answer to this question then, but I was just going to ask about, do you have like, a specific development plan with him and sort of what does he need to learn to be ready for a first team chance? Because 17 years old in the Premier League is obviously incredibly young. Yeah, yeah. like always, when you sign players uh, like him, then uh, at first, uh, I, the medical department is having an eye on him and there are some issues with his, with his knee and, and with his physical uh, qualities that we have to solve before, before he goes in a, in a Premier League session because a Premier League session is something very tough and, and uh, with a lot of duels and our intensity in the, in the sessions is, is a high one and you need to be prepared for it otherwise it would be difficult I think. So 
we give him this time and, and I'm sure that he makes this progress and then we will work on all the other, the other things we want to work with him. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Ralph. Thank you. Thanks, Vivian Brooks. Uh, morning, Ralph. Um, you, you mentioned earlier about, um, well, we talked a little bit about James Ward-Prowse, and you, you say that his prof sort of professionalism work rate, his sort of set-piece quality, obviously, we know is, is not in doubt. What, what more can he do um, to work on his game, in your opinion? Yeah, I think um, we, we have seen Prowse also scoring a lot of goals, maybe in other positions, like he plays in the moment, and uh, it can be that we in some moments bring him a little bit more up front because he has his qualities also in front of the goal and this is what, what uh, definitely helps every, every midfield player yeah, for showing up uh, when he also scores goals. We need to have more free kicks around the box that will also help him uh, to be more in the focus and you know, I think the rest, uh, he was uh, in the beginning of the season a little bit struggling with a knee, knee injury and uh, in the last week he had a little bit stomach problems but I think, uh, um, yeah, He's a very, very fit guy, and uh, he can handle this. and And he's still an alternative, uh, still, still able to to play ninety minutes in the Premier League. But we must have an eye on him because sometimes we must pay attention and we don't demand too much from him. Uh, he's the captain, yes. He, he wants to to go always uh, in front and and uh, lead the team. But uh, yeah, he's also only human, and and we must be careful with him this season also.